already start. Okay, welcome to Canon Institute. Uh, thank you so much for coming. We're thrilled about this event. This is part of our distinguished speaker series. Uh, we have with us today Ilya Krasilchik and Ekaterina Krongaus. Ilya Krasilchik. Hello. Ilya Krasilchik is a co-founder and publisher at Medusa. After dropping out of university at the age of 21, Ilya became the editor of the then most influential Moscow entertainment and city life magazine, magazine Afisha, uh, probably the youngest in Russia at the time to occupy this position. During his five-year tenure, Afisha published more than 100 issues, including specials like the oral history of the Russian media and the oral history of the Russian internet. Ilya stepped down in 2013 to become the product director at Afisha Publishing Company, launching three separate web-based media and a TV streaming service in one year. In October 2014, Ilya left Afisha and together with two partners launched Medusa, a groundbreaking Russian language web news outlet based in Riga, Latvia. By December 2015, uh, the monthly readership of Medusa exceeded three and a half million unique visitors per month, correct? per month, with 320,000 app downloads and more than 500,000 followers on social media. Today, Medusa boasts 4 million unique visitors per month. Yekaterina Krongaus is an editor and journalist at Medusa. She is a well-known Russian journalist, formerly editor-in-chief of the popular online media outlet Bolshoi, Bolshoi Gorod, the big city. She's formerly columnist for Snobru. She started her career in journalism in the mid-1990s as a correspondent for the Stelitsa, the capital magazine. She is the author of Am I a Bad Mother? and 33 Other Questions That Ruin Parents' Lives, which is acknowledged in Russia as a path-breaking book in the category of parenting advice. And I also want to say that she recently launched a startup, a groundbreaking babysitting training and babysitting arranging service in Moscow under the tagline Free for an Hour. So this is a very, uh, they're also related to one another. So this is, this is a very creative couple indeed. So before, before we proceed, creative and innovative, before we proceed, can I see a show of hands of who here reads Medusa on a regular basis? Okay, quite quite a few people. I have to say that for me, I know everything I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, for me, it's actually we were thinking about it uh, yesterday. You know, it's hard for me to imagine that just a year and a half ago, Medusa didn't exist. For me personally, such an integral part of my life. Uh, it's actually uh, Medusa is actually. Um, uh, basically the first thing I reach for when I wake up in the morning because I need to know what happened in Russia while I was sleeping because that's going to determine the course of my day. And so I want to tell Ilya that not only has he succeeded in creating an information product with news that I can use, I trust that Medusa will deliver the news that I need, he also altered my routine. I used to do yoga first thing in the morning. <laughs> so I really want to hear how you managed to do it. So please, go ahead. <laughs> I'll, I'll try, okay, yeah. So uh, I'll go there. Please. Thanks, Isabella. Thanks a lot. Uh, it's really an honor to be here. Uh, it's really an honor to see you. I'll try to s uh, uh, explain something about Medusa and why we did it and what happens with us. It's really quite an experience to make uh, to make a media. It's uh, I think right now it's some um, it's much more interesting than it was before because we have in a situation when it's it isn't possible to make any media and we, we make it, but uh, it's really fun and. Um, so I'll try to I'll try to tell you some story. And uh, actually, actually, our history begins like this. And uh, this is really the beginning of Medusa. And yes, this is IKEA, and uh, this is in Poland. We we're, we're not working there. We didn't work there. But this is where our story begins because we made this uh, media from the beginning. And actually, when you start a media, what you should do? You need to buy furniture. And uh, this is Poland. We, we, we are not in Poland. And when, when I, I am here, f I think for four or five days. And when I go to some uh, company and uh, to tell something about us, so I say, yeah, we are on Baltics. And now, I, uh, then I ask, do you know where is it? And I see a guy who's at, mm. and I say, so I can show you Google Maps and show where is it, uh, where, where are we? And I think for everybody in the world. The place where I walk looks like, like this. And uh, yes, we're here. <laughs> we're not here, but we're he there. And um, we're somewhere in the world making some media. And 
actually this country called Latvia doesn't exist in the minds of on on in minds of the people in the world. So we're just in the middle of nowhere. And actually, yeah, we bought this furniture and um, actually it was a quite a long trip because we have no IKEA in Latvia and we ne needed to go to Poland. And who who uh, goes there? It was me, a publisher of Medusa, and it was Ivan Kilpakov, my friend and one of the co-founder and he, uh, he is now an editor-in-chief of Medusa. So nobody else can buy furniture we go there and i can sh say this is quite an exp quite an experience and when you dr drove 600 kilometers and you see an ikea sign and this is, is your trip yeah yes it's it's quite an experience yeah we needed to build this furniture and this is our editors what they really do <laughs> and actually we didn't have enough money to buy all the furniture we needed so we walk like this, and then I go to this IKEA for a second time alone, and need to buy a little bit more furniture. So this is a really a history of Medusa and how we make a media. Um, how it happened? Six months before, in March 2014, um, it was a media called I think you know it. It's called Lenteru, and it was the largest media outlet in, in Russia. It was fifth largest online news outlet in Europe, and uh, it reached 2 million unique visitors per day on these days. It was the uh, uh, Crimea crisis. It was uh, in the middle of this crisis, and the editor-in-chief was just, uh, Galina Timchenko was just fired from this news outlet, and everybody from the editorial and uh, from, from, from the media, the technological department, editorial, marketing, everybody just left the media. It was. 80 people and they were just left. And um, I actually didn't work there, as Isabella said. I was an editor in chief of, I was a product director of Afisha Company, but we, s we were sitting on, on the same floor. And um, I, uh, the, uh, in, in a month, uh, Galina and Ivan, well, Galina was editor in chief and Ivan was a deputy editor, they came to me and said, let's make something, let's make something new. It was very interesting and we just started to think of what we want to make. Uh, and we we got some ideas. So we th we want to make something completely different. We didn't want to make the second Lenteru. It was quite an impossible. Lenteru was launched in 1999. It was 15 years ago, and this is a new era. We need to make something else. And actually, it's not just it's not in, it, it's not interesting to make the same thing for a second time. Uh, we need to make something bulletproof. And uh, by bulletproof, I mean that we needed to make some media which is hard to block because uh, the blocking problem was uh, it was 2014 and the blocking problem was a huge already and we understood that we need something uh, which is hard to block and that means that we can't make only a website uh, and we understand that we have no much time no not so much time because uh, uh, we have some people from editorial, they need to walk, and we understand that n right now everybody are talking about Lenteru, and we need to launch something fast, because uh, in a year, that nobody, everybody just forget about us, and we need to use this, situa this situation. So we need to move quickly, make something new, and make something very strong. So we got some ideas, and... Um, we understand that we want to make less content, not more content. Lenteru produ produced more than 100 pieces of content every day, uh, maybe, maybe even more than 200 pieces of content. And we understand that there was too much information in around us. And we have, all of us have Facebook, uh, so, uh, all of us have Twitter, and we have um, some other social networks and um, profiles. And we understand that there is too much content. And the main part of our job is to make this huge uh, information noise just a little bit less noisier. So we need to pick a really important things and show, you t show it to the audience. And uh, if w actually it w we, we was at a war with Ukraine, it was an active, uh, uh, active moment of this war and uh, there was too much fake around, fakes around us and we understood that our job maybe it's not to produce new can content. Maybe it's more about to check what happens 
around us. Uh, then we, we, we like facts, not opinions. And that means that um, you know, when something happens, there is actually, I think nobody understands what happens around. And somebody tried to predict what happens next. And the problem is with all this analysis that everybody are wrong in the, on the long, um, on the long distance. And we don't like these opinions because it doesn't help and uh, we don't have information to make this analysis. We just want to produce facts and to check it and to be m as much objective as we can. Uh, we understand that we make making news, but uh, actually, to be frankly, nobody understands news. And uh, when when a media publish some news content, they think that, okay, so we, s we, we already talked about it, so that's okay, we, we covered this problem. But the problem is that the people don't understand what happens actually. We can give them a context in the news, but they don't understand. And um, we, the, the when the news editors walk and they think that people are in this context and uh, they, n they know what happens before and they know all the history, but people don't know it. And actually, it's not a problem of the people, it's a problem of the media. It's our job to make everything clear, and we need to explain everything what happens around us. Uh, we need to be everywhere, and um, it's uh, about bully pro bulletproof problem, because we, we need to be everywhere our reader readers are so we need to be on the web we need to be in the apps we need if they using a watch we need to be in the watch if they using a email subs emails we need to we need to use this too and um, so we it's endless endless list of platforms but we need to be everywhere and this helps us uh, in the blocking problem because if they blocked some part of our media so we have another one and we are not in Russia. And this means that uh, we just, uh, uh, I have many questions, are you a media in exile? I think we are not a media in exile, we just, uh, we, uh, on the beginning we just thought that we need a country with a good laws for media and where is better to work. And this is, I think it's not about um, exile, it's just, about, it's, it's, it's just about a global world. We can be anywhere, we can make a media from any country when it's better to make it. So we think this, we thought that Russia is not the best country to make a media in this situation. So we, we just un understood that we need to choose another country. How we did it? So we had, actually we, we uh, went to the lawyers and we, they made a long list. It's, it was a, a little bit longer, it just had no place on the screen, sorry. So, uh, Let's imagine this is our countries. These are countries. What uh, term, terms we had? So it should be not uh, so far away from Moscow because we are news media and we, uh, we, may, we are working on the Moscow time. And so I think Portugal is a nice country and uh, there, is, there is warm and not so expensive, but we can start our work at five o'clock in the morning. So we, it's, it's nice to, to make a media, but not on such terms. Yes, yeah, so Portugal, bye-bye. <laughs> uh, living costs. We have, we had 20 editors. We need to move them to another country, and we need to pay them salaries. And if they, we uh, move them, uh, for example, to Israel, it's a warm too, but, yeah, yeah, you can see like, uh, like Israel, so. <laughs> me too, but it's, a really expensive country. So we understood that we, if we, we can't afford it. So our budget will be too big and we can afford this country. So bye bye Israel. Uh, I think you underestimate the warm thing. I agree. <laughs> I agree. We, we underestimate many things actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then the immigration law, because if you have, t as I said, 20 editors and you need to m build a company in another country and hire too much foreign, uh, foreign employees. N there are not so much countries in the world who like this process. So, hi Ukraine, Lithuania and Latvia. Bye-bye Israel, Portugal, Netherlands. So, this is our choices. 
then we thought that we're an objective media. We are for Russian audience. So I, I, we thought that it's not cool to make a me media in a country which actually is at war with Russia. <laughs> bye bye Ukraine. <laughs> so we had these two countries and, we, and now we just thought, no, no Lithuania. <laughs> and this is Latvia. <laughs> Yeah, it was our choice. So we're in Latvia right now, we're in Riga, in, it's a place, as I said, that nobody knows in the world. But it's, uh, I think it's good, it's a very small city, it's 600,000 people. And uh, we are like in a spaceship because there is nothing to do except to walk in Riga. <laughs> and actually it's good because you can walk anytime. Uh, Lentaru had uh, eight employees. Meduza, Meduza on the start had 20 employees. It's small, small uh, media. But w after we launched, we understood that it's cool. You have 20 guys, you move them to another country, they understood that they make something big and they change everything in their lives. So they think that they are on some pirate ship or in the space ship, they fly somewhere or they sail somewhere and they are all together. And this is designers, this is editorial, uh, this is editors, this is uh, uh, developers. So everybody worked together. And for the media, it was quite good because uh, everybody understood this, this is one thing, one product. And this is a very important thing for every media in the world because that's why everybody is working together. And by everybody, I mean content, design, and development. And that helps us to make everything together and we can make much more stuff uh, which is impossible to make in the traditional media and we make not just the articles or reports, we make some new formats, some new content and I'll tell you anything, uh, something about it uh, a little bit later. Uh, what is most important things for us? Uh, so I'll say that. It's a, of course it's news and this is our main uh, format. As a, if I may say so. And um, I think every media need to have a skeleton, a frame. And this is why people will uh, visit you day by day. Why, why th is this main scenario for your readers? Why they will visit you? Uh, for why Isabella won't do any yoga in the morning now? <laughs> no. yeah, yeah, is it your yoga? <laughs> This it's it's now my yoga. Yeah. Okay, it's a new yeah. yoga. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually our, new, uh, our news uh, for most time say you something bad, so I think it's a bad yoga. <laughs> um, yeah, this is our frame, and this is our main scenario for our readers. They came to Medusa to know what what happens in the world. Actually, I read it in some New York Times uh, uh, research. They said they called it something else. They said uh, they call it. Uh, I need to check if the world is still alive, so if, if, they, if it doesn't drop yet. So uh, they go to Medusa and check, there is no nuclear war, okay, so <laughs> we're alive. That's great, yeah. <laughs> it's the main scenario, actually. They just visit to, sh to check that the world is still okay. And if you have this frame, the skeleton, then you can make anything uh, around it. You, you can make an experiment, you can <coughs> make a more content, you can make uh, anything. For example, you can make a long form journalism. This is very important stuff for us and th th we have four special <laughs> correspondents and this is two we are proud of them uh, uh, most, of, most, of, most of all. And uh, f for example, Yaza had a, a, journalis a journalistic award but uh, he get a GQ award in 2014 for covering the Ukrainian crisis and Daniel Turovsky um, get the same award on 2015 for, for covering the Syrian crisis. So I think these are two main themes for everybody in the world for the last two years and we're really proud that they uh, got these awards. And th actually GQ award is the main award for Russian journalists. Yeah, we have some strange awards, sorry, but mm -hmm. uh, we have no <laughs> nothing else <laughs> to show you. Um, then, this is explanatory journalism. I think if you, you read it at Medusa, if you read Medusa, or if you didn't read, read Medusa, you saw it on many US media right now. 
uh, this is really important because this helps us to explain anything what happens in the world. News don't, uh, can't do it, but explanatory journalism can. We can explain anything from uh, what happens uh, when you are in a jail, what you need to do when you're in jail, and Russia makes some new law, what, how we can live with it, or something n absolutely non-political. So we had a cut about how to make a perf perfect omelet. It's useful too, actually. So you, make, you can make an omelet and the next day you can be in jail. It's, it's all of our life, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, this is a really clear format, but we make uh, right now much more difficult formats uh, to, to produce. For example, this format calls chat. And we, for example, this chat is about economy. And this is a format which can be short and can be long. And the reader um, decide, do, do he need this short or long? So we have a story about economy and we, uh, we say some things and then reader decide, do he want, uh, does he want something more about this? or he j won't just skip this sentence and read next. So this is explanatory, and we don't know how much time the reader have for us, but he can decide. Do he, he can read it in one minute, and he can you, uh, read it in 15 minutes. It's, it's his choice. Uh, we make news games, and actually it's um, Katya's uh, main part of, of work, and uh, news games, it's, we have uh, some news agenda, and we make games about it. Uh, we actually, I think we made something like 50 games last year, something like that. And, and we, you can make such things only if your development department works together with editorial and if your developers are the part of editorial, because where you need to uh, think about it together, you need to make it together. For example, this is a game, we called it Dic Dictator. Dictator. Uh, actually, actually, it was, uh, uh, we call it uh, House of Cards, as you remember. Excellent. And we uh, we launched it uh, a week ago, a week and a half, when the last season... On March 4th. On yeah. March 4th. Frank Underwood, yeah. As all of you need to know. <laughs> so I can explain what is it. I, um, okay. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't show my presentation slides, so you, can, you, you don't know what happens next. Okay. So, so you, have usually a, you have a card. And for example, uh, you play with a computer, and computer put a card. Oh, this is Putin. Yeah, he chose it, not us. Yeah, and uh, this is Putin. And I have three cards. It's uh, president of Georgia, president of uh, Kyrgyzstan, or president of US USA. So I need to choose what, which card w should I play. So I play with Barak. Ah, no, no, sorry, I don't play with Barak. I play with As Aslanbek Atambayev. And I lose, because uh, the power of card is the percent which this president get on the last elections. So Putin get a little bit more than Aslanbek Zabayev, so he's stronger. So it's one for a computer. Now it's computer turn because he uh, it won the last uh, last turn. So he played with Recep Erdogan, but I'm lucky. Lucky I have Bashar Assad. And of course I won with Bashar Assad. It's Bashar Assad. <laughs> it's 1-1. One, one. Then I play with Barack Obama because I have Maduro and Margilashvili, Obama, it's, it's weak cards. So I, ju I'll play just, it be more interesting for you, I think, yeah. So I'll play with Barack Obama. And computer answer me with Peter Poroshenko. It's even stronger than Barack Obama. So he wins again. It's two for one. Then computer play with Andrzej Duda. And I have Alexander Lukashenko, so <laughs> it's uh, really a one card, <laughs> win card, yeah. So it's two two, and it's a tough, tough, uh, tough play. Uh, and I have bad cards. I have Dilma Ru Ra Rousseff, I think Rousseff, and Nikolai, uh, Nicholas Maduro and Georgi Magilashvili. So I'll, I'll play with Georgi because I like Georgia. And uh, the computer answered me with. Ilham Aliyev, and of course Ilham Aliyev is much, much, much stronger. So computer wins, and I have this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, share, share photo, which I, I can just share to, to social network, and it makes this game much more viral. So I can show my, what, uh, what happens with me and can show it to my friends. So we make such games, and uh, for example, I have one more game. So Katya, you can explain what is it. 
Oh. <laughs> you know, our President Vladimir Putin is always late for all important meeting he has. Uh, except Barack Obama, as we know, right? Except, now. yeah. Um, he always late, and uh, in summer, uh, he should meet with the Pope, with the Pope, and he was late. For two hours. For two hours. And the thing is, sometimes there is news, you, you, you can't do anything with it. It's funny, but it's not useful. So we decide to make um, a game. It's a lot of... Uh, code uh, for games. Actually, this game was made 30 years before, yeah. So. Yeah, it's Mario, it's yeah? Just a Mario. Super so Mario you have Mario. a lot of open, uh, open, open source, uh, open source co codes for, for, for a lot of games, like Tetris, Mario, uh, Pac-Man, or something like this. So we did the Mario thing, and we uh, just uh, changed uh, Mario, and the uh, uh, wife, uh, yeah, we ch it's not wife, we just forget the world, sorry. So uh, we change Mario f for Putin and the wife of this bride. Of the game. The bride. The bride, yeah. bride we changed to was Pope. Very yeah. So we, ch we changed the, the bride with the Pope and Mario with the Putin. And it took us, I think, a day to rewrite the code, to redraw uh, the characters. And then it was the just please help Putin to get to Pope in time. <laughs> yeah, so uh, so we do okay. Okay. So we do such thing with the news uh, you, you you don't know what to do with. It's it's funny, it's some kind of important because it, it, it it's strange that Putin is always late. It it means something. So we we try we 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 ask you to help him stop doing such a thing. Yeah, there are some things when you can't be serious. So we ca we can just put a column about so oh my god, Putin is late. And this time too, oh my God, it's it's horrible, but it like doesn't work. So yeah. he's he's, he's uh, in power for 15 years and he's always late. So we can r talk about this a every time he's late for so somebody important. So we we can make only jokes about it. So and it's it's uh, we can uh, use a little bit of irony about it. So I yeah. can I can tell tell two more examples if 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 it's okay. Sure. Yeah. So. Um, there is a parking thing in Moscow. Uh, it, three years ago, you, you, you could park anywhere. There, there was no problem. Uh, but on now... On the sidewalks, yeah. Yeah, anywhere. But uh, in two years, it changed. So now you, you couldn't park... You, you can find any park slot, and uh, uh, you always can be evacuated. And every day there is no new uh, rules and new... Uh, new no parking um, things. So we we did a minesweeper. Do you know minesweeper? Yeah. Uh, when you should uh, find a park slot uh, available for you, or you you uh, you you'll you'll be evacuated. And uh, uh, so it was uh, fun. And um, one more example is about crazy change, crazy exchange. Uh, as you know, the ruble is uh, a little weak right now. Yeah, a little weak and a little crazy. You never know what happens today with the oil uh, price or rubble price or dollar price or euro price. So there is crazy stuff going on every day. And uh, that's why some prices in Moscow uh, is really uh, low. Like you can buy a car. For you, not for us. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You can buy a car 30% uh, cheaper than in Europe, even it's a Europe car. And you can, you know, buy Xbox uh, even cheaper than uh, it's in America. So we did a crazy exchange game. Uh, you have a 3,000 rubles, and you should uh, decide... That's nothing right now. No, it's something. No, it's nothing. It's nothing for you, but okay. Uh, so you need to decide fast. Uh, would you exchange it to uh, fifty dollars? Like, would you? Fifty dollars. Tick, 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 tick. Yes or no? I, I can't. Yes or no? <laughs> you need to decide. Yes or no? No. No. It's bad because fifty dollars is better than three thousand rubles. Okay, you you just lost like 
50 hundred rubles. Okay, would you change it to uh, a barrel of oil? Yes or no? Yes or no? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, it's bad. A barrel of oil, like uh, $30 now or something. 41. Oh, 41. Yeah. It's bad anyway. And then would you change it to, you know, coffin? Would you? Yes. Oh, it's good because coffin is like 17,000 rubles. And then you like, you need to, you, to decide fast and you even don't know how, but Xbox One, uh, 1,000 yens. And <laughs> so I think you get the picture, yeah. Uh, Very yeah. tough. Yeah, okay, so. Oh, it was a funny game with Isabella. <laughs> Why you always don't let me do I'll this? I'll try to go to the okay. next slide. Sorry, so le let's forget about games. Yeah, okay, so. Uh, I think it, 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 this strategy works. This strategy means that we try to make every, anything, we try to experiment for all formats we can. It's, it's first of all, it's very interesting because you, uh, every week you make something new and you see what wo what, how it works and what doesn't work and what work. And we can check it every week and uh, we had a big strategy, and uh, I said to you about it. We had a strategy that we need to be everywhere. We need to be bulletproof, something like that. And we're making it, and we have some delays, but we're making it. At, but our main strategy is to make an experiment, because um, media, they construct future, actually. They construct a new language. They construct how we talk with each other. We, they construct how to talk about the rea reality about us. And there are many, ch uh, many ways to uh, make these talks. And w nobody knows what will be the next thing. And you need to just to prove your theories. And if you experiment for not for one with one thing and when you experiment with tens of things, this is, if you fail with some experiment, it's, it's a cheap fail for you, cheap, uh, cheap mistake. And if you uh, have, uh, and if you make only big strategies, and if you make things uh, only, and sometimes you make something and you make it for half a year and then it fails, and you have, it, it, can, it, it can fail. So it's a really expensive mistake for you. you ca uh, we, ca we can afford it, actually, and so we're, we're a small company. And I think this uh, theory works, because one and a half year after launch, and we have four million uh, unique visitors per month, it's only the website. And we have 300,000 apps downloads. We have 400,000 push subscribers. This is people who describe for our pushes on the web. And if something important happens, we just send this push to their browsers. And this is works great because you, if you have some important and you want to tell it to the readers, you can do it even if they are not on your website. They will see it. It it's a huge. It I, I can't say this is a weapon, but it's a, it's a great. It's cool instrument. Um, we have a, uh, half a million followers uh, on Twitter, and we have 45,000 daily newsletter subscribers, and we're making this, uh, uh, all, uh, most of uh, newsletters are making by robots, so you get some newsletter, and uh, there are some headlines, and there are some links, and nothing from, from people, yeah, and we ma but we make this, we, uh, w by when we started this newsletter a year ago, we thought that um, news, uh, email, your inbox, it's a uh, part of your privacy. And when you get an email, you want to get an email for, for not from a human. And you want this, that this email will be for you. So we understood that if you will start this daily uh, newsletter, it needs to be written by people. So it's our, so this is a product too, and we write it every day. And if this is a sad day, it will be a sad newsletter. If it will be uh, some crazy day, there will be uh, many jokes. You will, you can find this on the, our website in our app. It's only on email, but it is a, it is a small product which we you can only reach on newsletter, and people really love it because they uh, they don't need to read news every day. They can just uh, use this email, and this is. Funny or this is sad, but this this have some w they have some emotions when they they read this newsletter, and w this is our mm, core audience. This is three hundred thousand people. They visit us more than three times a week. So this is our most loyal audience. This audience which loves us, 
And I think that allows us because that we are not boring and because we make some things they didn't, didn't see uh, anywhere else and because we speak with them. Because they gi give this newsletter, we uh, answer their mails and they just like that we are really humans. And if I make some mistakes, they think, okay, they are humans and this is good, they are loyal. And all of this is 100% organic, so we had no uh, no money from any marketing. We have we can buy traffic. We can so it's we can make an ads. We can do it because we have no money for it. So these people just came to us. I hope because of our work. Yeah. Uh, so it's one and a half year of experience, and we understood something about us. Uh, maybe in a one and a half year we will. We'll uh, think that we are all wrong and th this is not our principles, but I, I, I doubt it actually. So first of all, you can't always be serious. We are in real serious situation and we need to be like a part of the situation. We need to be over it. And people, so our main audience, 70% of our audience are in Russia. So they live with this situation day by day. and they can just visit a new site and to read oh something that happens again or something that happens again something that happens again if you read it for one time you 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 wonder if you uh, read for second time you wonder if you read for third time you just you you just ignore it and um uh as i said you need to have a scenario for your readers scenario why they come to you every morning morning every evening to make something. And this is a best scenario when you are in a good mood and this scenario calls, okay, I'm in a good mood. I need to make my mood a little bit worse. I need to read the news. So it's a good scenario for a media. You need s some other scenarios. That's why you, when you go to Medusa, you read not, uh, not only news. The news are always bad, always, 9% bad. Uh, but you need to joke sometimes, to laugh sometimes, to have an irony, and we need to do it. Uh, media is like a, like a guy, and we, when you talk about with a guy, you, you, you don't want that he will, be, he will talk only about politics. And he can be always serious. And media is like, like a man, like a guy. Uh, you can't be always serious. You, you can't be just an interesting man. And that's why we need to make uh, different stuff. Not only, not only be, be serious. It, it, the pe people will not read it. Uh, people don't understand news, and we need to explain everything. And if people don't understand anything, it's really our problem. And we need to explain step by step every, 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 every piece of the global politics or uh, local politics. For example. We um, understood it was, I think, uh, two months ago, and there was a Syrian conflict for uh, five years, I think. And uh, we understood that, yeah, we, we write about Syria every day. Something happened there, something happened there. Our um, correspondent came there. Ma many things, news, uh, reports, everything. But we just understood that we write it, and we write it for a year, and other media write it for uh, five years. But most of our audience don't understand about Syria nothing. And if they read this, all of this uh, content, they think, uh, they, they, so they w wasn't interested in Syria three years ago or four years ago when everybody already uh, said uh, everything and explained everything about Syria. They just I are interested right now when bombing begins, when, um, uh, when terror came to Europe, when mm, refugees came to Europe, they wasn't interested in it before. And right now, they have no, no um, options to understand what happens in Syria, because every, every media already explained it five years ago. And this is our problem. This is not a problem of the reader. So we need to stop, uh, make five steps away, and we need to explain it. And this helps everybody because, yeah, right now, right now it helps. Uh, if we don't make it, it it's, it's, we, you don't need to leave the country, uh, make some other media in the other, in other country. Yeah, you can make it, but why? W what's the reason? We, 
we make this media for a huge audience. And if you believe a country, we need to make a media for a huge audience. And we ne need that the, the people in our country will love us and will read us and will think about the world as us. So these only the options to fight against, not only propaganda, for fight against this uh, point of view, which is uh, disgusting for us. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's really important, it's, a, it's more for me because I'm a publisher and monetization is a part of my job, but it's really important that the media should earn the money on its own. And media is something which can deal with the audience. And this is the main part of the media job. So we know our audience, we can work with it, and we can we know it. So that's why we can make an advertising for it too. And this is a part of our job. We can do it. We can not only forget about it or think, oh, this will be other guys who will make it. No, we need to think about it too. It's not an editorial uh, part, of course, because it's dangerous for editorial. But it's a part of uh, media as a product. And we think about media as a product uh, at large. And the, this is, I think, the most important thing that we are against. El I, it's hard for me to pronounce this word, but the isolationism. Mm -hmm. Yes? Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, and I think it's a main thing. We are against it. And this is our main threat. It's a main threat for Russia. It's a main threat for countries with, which are thinking about Russia. Because the main topic in Russia is that we are like an island. And we are great. And there is no other world. So we are center of the world. And something everybody else are... Uh, just traitors, or there are problems, or they just hate us. And uh, people don't understand that Russia is just uh, one country of the world. And people in the world just not so like interested in Russia, the Russian things. And then this is, yeah, this is something, it's, sometimes it's a great country, sometimes it's not a gr so, much that so great country, sometimes it's a horrible country, we made mistakes, but it's a part of the world. <laughs> and uh, this, uh, uh, talking about media in exile, we are not media in exile. We just see no borders. We make it from anywhere. It's a global world, and we can be in Latvia because it's much more easier for us to manage a media from Latvia, not from Russia, right now. Maybe it's changed sometimes, but this is about th the, I think, not united world, but the global world, and Russia is a part of it. And the, it I think uh, somebody asked me what the, your political. Uh, statement. I think this is a political statement. We are together in the big world, and this is very important. And this is really, we, there are no borders, and we're the proof. So, thank you. <laughs> now, I think we have some questions. We have some questions. Thank you so much, Ilya, and thank you, Katya, for your comments. I want to ask you if there is anything that you as a journalist, specifically a, a, a writer and editor, if there is something that you would like to comment on based on, on what Ilya talked about, because he's talking as a publisher. What's, get what's, total bullshit, so <laughs> what's, what's been your experience of this process? Um, no, I, I support him. You know, it's a part of my <laughs> um, political statement, but uh, I think that I, I can comment a little bit uh, uh, on what he said. So the thing is, uh, I find interesting that we have a development uh, staff with us, uh, uh, and we can talk with them, and we can do a uh, thing faster than it always been. I don't know how it's in America, but in Russia, in media, if you need to change something on your website, like a, you know, mm, something. Mm. It would take months, mm. uh, and there is uh, people who think you are stupid, and you think that they are boring, mm. and th that was, they were not connect, not, we, we were not connected with uh, uh, that people, and now we, we are. So we, we can do uh, a new technology things really quick, and, um, so we tried to do uh, this kind of changes in our editorial uh, creative thinking uh, uh, the same. So we always come with the new ideas and new uh, features and new formats, like uh, Ilya uh, told about the question about Syria, yeah? And there is uh, a lot of themes we're talking about, but nobody understands. So we have a new format, uh, and we call it shameful questions. 
and they usually ask me to 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 write them because I'm not very good at uh, serious stuff. Information. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> no, I am joking. Yeah, You're joking. talking serious. N never, <laughs> never mess with that, please. <laughs> so uh, they ask me to write it like a shameful question about Syria and where is it? <laughs> I, I really don't know. And and why uh, uh, why America you know can just pow and kill all the ISIS people because I'm afraid of them. Or we, we did the same thing with the shooting, the mass shooting in America, because from our point of view, we, we can't understand the thing. Why all the politics uh, don't make uh, the thing uh, the main of their, uh, you know. I think the Americans don't understand it too, sometimes actually. Yeah, so we asked why, why is it okay to have a gun? Uh, why is it always a mass shooting? Either about race, either about young children in school, so uh, or transgender. It's a lot of uh, thing you you talk about, but you don't even understand, and you have a lot of shameful questions. Uh, it's not okay to ask them serious, but we we do this special format, or we have a, a test. We have a lot of tests, uh, like there were news that uh, in school in the uh, in the something like jars here. The, the examines, uh, 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 the girl uh, talked about poem and she pretend that it's Mandelstam, if you know, it's a mm -hmm. very serious poem in Russian. But there were a, a rapper, uh, Oxymiron, and the school teacher didn't recognize it. And it, uh, he, he thought that it's really Mandelstam. And it was a, a huge thing <laughs> because in Russia, school teachers uh, sometimes. So she got 10 for it, yeah. Yeah, yeah she got, <laughs> yeah. So we did a test. Uh, if you really could uh, see where is the Russian great, great boy, boy, great boy, or it's uh, uh, some kind of uh, song. And uh, it, w it was interesting. And it's, uh, it's a lot of tests like this, like about feminism, how, uh, how uh, sexist are you, because it's a great issue in Russia. Mm. So uh, the thing is, we're not, uh, when, when there is a small company and we're development guy with us, and we're designers with us, and it, it's all, uh, we're all in the same small uh, flat, uh, we can do a, l a lot more than you think uh, you can do with the 20 people. So I think that's that's uh, some like comment. Thank you so much. I think what's really important from what I'm hearing you guys say is that uh, there is a you you manage to create a real connection with the reader, and I think that this sort of the creative, th the exchange that we see between you, you know, it's sort of it, it things you can feel that there is real you know creative process going on. Do you feel it too? Yes, of course. And so you know, and so you feel like you're part of it. Um, I want to ask uh, Ilya, we're going to go to the questions from the audience in a moment, but I want to ask you um, a question that's uh, something that a lot of people here really think about a lot, and that's the question about how do we counter Russian propaganda? It's something that people have been thinking about now for a couple of years. You know, there's some sort of thoughts about how do we organize it. I think that maybe s sometimes people think of Medusa as being, you know, sort of a, you know, a force that counteracts uh, the propaganda, the Kremlin propaganda. So what are your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, we had these conversations a lot, and this is a, a really popular conversation in Europe right now because... Uh, uh, er, every Russians, uh, Russians in uh, European countries watch uh, Russian television, and uh, it's not banned in, in the most of the countries. And yeah, this is a problem. But I, I think that um, w the counter propaganda issue it's a bad issue. I think we are the bad people for asking because uh, uh, propaganda is something like PR. So, but it's PR from the government, and this calls propaganda. And if if uh, you can do PR, but you are not a journalist. If if you are a journalist, you can make a PR. It's a main it's a uh, main enemy for a journalist to PR. So I actually, I think this is bad uh, bad conversation at all. But if we're thinking about it, so from the other side, so okay, when a journalist are thinking about just about how to make this counter propaganda, okay, 
and then we have huge problems. First of all, uh, how this counter propaganda will reach Russian audience. So you, if you make a counter propaganda, you need to make a tele television. And you make a television, you need to be better than Russian TV channels. So that you need to uh, have at least so much money which have Russian TV channels. And this is a really huge money. So uh, Russian government really cares about television. And, uh, and I don't think that any other uh, government can uh, pay uh, TV anchors and TV, uh, TV producers so much money as Russian, t uh, Russian state pays. Because this is a part of Russian state. And uh, this is the first problem. Second problem is that a Russian uh, audience uh, watching Russian TV, because they have TV shows in Russian, and this is Russian TV shows about uh, about gangsters, about love, about something what happens in their life. And these TV shows are, it was made in Russia, and this is why it's interesting about Russians played by Russians. So they show, uh, they see, they watching movies and TV shows about themselves, and this is why they're watching this TV. And the only the second reason th why they're watching this TV is the is the news. So you can't just make the news; you need to make everything, and you can make it from US, from Europe, from 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 another except Russia. Uh, I actually, can make it from Ukraine because many of uh, Russian TV shows are actually Ukrainian. But now we have some problems with. It. But but still, uh, so the third problem is how you this okay. For example, you you get this money and s from somewhere you get these people. I don't know from where which will make this television for Russian audience, which really understands the Russian audience, and you have the Russian uh, heroes on these uh, TV channels. I don't know where you will get this because they are in Russia too. So you make this great TV channel, very expensive fantastic great picture like channel one or channel two so here's a question how you'll reach the audience so okay you can reach the audience on brighton beach you can reach an audience in berlin you can reach uh, an audience in latvia and i think this, that's really good because this uh, audience need the russian tv channel and for example i'm from uh, latvia right now and there is a big problem with uh, information for Latvian uh, citizens which are talking citizens or non-citizens. This is a status for uh, Russian language people in, in Latvia, which is weird too a little bit. But they, uh, they watch Russian television and they don't have an option to watch any other television. Russian people are bad in foreign languages. When everybody knows that. They're really bad. Uh, I don't know why. But... Uh, that's not the reason not to talk with them on, in their own language. If you want to reach it, you need to do it. So this is, yeah, you can make it for some diaspora in, uh, in Europe or in Israel or in US, but you can't reach a Russian audience in Russia. You need to be uh, uh, one of the buttons on your uh, remote, on th and these buttons are not available for anybody in Europe and US. So. There are so much problems, so I, d I don't need, need. I don't know how to make it. Mm -hmm. So uh, for the long answer. Yeah, yeah I, I will have a quick. Uh, the propaganda is a lie. It's a fake. It's something that that never happened and something that never me meant to be. So the the only way you can do a real uh, counter propaganda is to tell facts not opinions, as Ilya said. So uh, we have a, a, a format called uh, fact check. And sometimes when uh, politics uh, talk, like Putin uh, had an open line with the Russians, we just uh, uh, put a lot of notes and we proved uh, all that he said. And we did a fact check like you do in, uh, in all media in America. <coughs> and we just put it uh, like a feature. And we always do this with the word that politics said. We just try to stay uh, object. We just try to tell you facts. Mm -hmm. Was it or was it not happened? Mm -hmm. So I think there is our only way to, to, to deal with it. 
Absolutely. Well, and the important point also is that, you know, this truthful information needs to come in a form that it, it, it competes with, uh, it's basically with other, inter uh, competes with entertainment formats. So people need to be s entertained and that's what gu you guys are doing. Let's go to okay. audience questions. We have microphones who, um, okay, please. Uh, right here in the front. Uh, oh, okay, that's fine. That's fine. We'll, okay. we'll come to you. Sorry. Hi, uh, Yevgen Satin. Thank you for a very interesting Hi. presentation. Um, I had a question. Uh, how do do Medusa journalists have trouble covering uh, Russia? Because I know you guys recently went to Grozny in Chechnya and did a very interesting investigative piece. Has that gotten harder, or is you know what's the process of covering kind of on the ground reporting from Russia? Thank you. Uh, we have three special correspondents in Russia right now, and they work there. And uh, uh, I, I I can say that they have some problems with it because uh, the main problems for Russian media there is a di a different situation in other c in in different countries. For example, if you are a journalist in Belarus, so this is a huge problem for you as a journalist. And if you are a journalist in in Russia, so main problems have the media or the owner of the media. So there there are different ways to uh, deal. Uh, with media by state authorities. So the Russian way, the, f the main Russian way is to deal through an editors, through owners, through editor-in-chief, something like that. If you're a journalist, you can make your work, except a couple of things. So if you make a pieces about Chechnya, you, 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 it's huge possibility that you get huge problems till death. And uh, there is not so much so so uh, dangerous themes in Russia. Yeah, I think this, I think if you write something about uh, Putin's family uh, or f Putin's uh, wealth, yeah, I think. I, I think Chechnya is the, the main, main dangerous thing. Our journalists didn't have right now problems in Chechnya. W we know of journalists which, all, uh, which had two weeks ago a huge problems. They was, was beaten, their car was, uh, destroyed, so they had problems, and uh, yeah, it, it's, it can happen. Uh, but if you, uh, but our special reporters, when then they recover some issues in Moscow, in Saint Petersburg, they go to the former former uh, Soviet Union countries, and yeah, they just do they work. Yeah. So, uh, I'll there is two thing, uh, a bravery thing, and it, you need it when you go to Chechnya or something. Uh, like that, somewhere dangerous. And the second thing, it's information. Uh, in Russia, officials and people, uh, they don't use to talk with the journalists. They don't like it. You don't have statistics on anything like adoption rating or something, or you don't have statistic. And official, uh, uh, officials, they can just refuse your, your interest, refuse your questions, they can just Say, oh, I don't want to talk to you. And the people don't use to it. The people likes to go to TV shows when you're going to be popular or something. And they don't like to tell their stories because they don't know what what will go out of it. Maybe uh, their neighbors were, you know, would look at them strange or something. And so there is two things. And if you, you, you are braver, you're brave and or you don't need it and if there is the theme when you don't need to a lot of officials uh, cooperation and you can uh, uh, make people talk to you that it will be okay but there is a lot of themes you 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 can do uh, because nobody talks and yeah. uh, there is a great example that I w w think it was a month ago in the Re really good Russian newspaper, Vedemister, uh, and there was some sentence. It calls like uh, the source who wanted to remain anonym anonymously declined to answer. <laughs> and this is how Russian uh, yeah. Russian media works. You have people who they want to be anonymous, and they they don't talk even they don't even talk that. even anonymous. It's so crazy about it how it works in Russia. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Okay, let's go to the front right here. <coughs> Thank you, Eric Chapman. I've been with Bloomberg. Uh, you Hi. spoke of uh, wanting to make your service bulletproof. Now, we've heard a lot in this country about the uh, Chinese great firewall against the Internet, but with regard to Putin's Russia, 
the impression is that as long as 80, 90 percent of the people watch Soviet television, oh, sorry, uh, 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 yeah, uh, Edison, yeah. Uh, <laughs> he couldn't care thing. less what foreign correspondents write. He couldn't care less about a handful of people, uh, or four million being a handful in Russian terms, uh, watching uh, what you say. Uh, so, uh, would you explain what obstacles uh, may exist for dissemination in the manner that you used uh, uh, via the internet and so on? So, yeah, most of the pe people watch television, you're right, absolutely, uh, absolutely right. Uh, I don't know the exact numbers, and uh, actually I don't trust the numbers, because Russian stati statis statistics is awful. Actually. So, uh, but uh, the internet right now is huge. Uh, internet right now is a very interesting situation, Russian internet. So we had a, one of the freest internet in the world. And now we are in transition from the free internet to the regulated internet by state, very regulated. And this is a unique transition. I don't know we, we ha had any other country such a situation before, because it's really fast. So this we had a f absolutely free internet, I think, five years ago. And now we have tens of laws against internet, and w the authority have really easy options to block any site on the internet. But uh, the internet is huge and uh, it grows fast. And uh, w the big Russian media, I, the biggest Russian media right now is RBK, and this is a good media. And uh, th their audience is something like 20 million people. It's big audience. And you actually, if you want something to change, you don't. Ne you actually don't need a majority. You don't need a, a, a extremely big mass of people which want to change something. And then, uh, I'm sorry, and uh, yeah, well, the blocking, pro and I want just to be to tell, talk about the blocking problem, and this is a problem, uh, and we can't be blocked any time, and we uh, don't need a card decision to block us, actually. So we can just it by, by click, and, but uh, we have many plan Bs for it. Uh, at we had some precedent, it was, uh, actually a month before, and they, uh, the authority blocked the main uh, torrent tracker uh, in Russia. Uh, they blocked the torrent tracker, it was huge, uh, me tens of millions of people visited it uh, day by day, because they get an, an pirate content from there, actually. And the audience of this torrent tracker, after national blocking, drops for 10%. So it's a good precedent for us, because uh, the people now knows how to unblock a blocked site. And this is why we don't have a Chinese wall. Chinese wall, it's serious. Russian blocking, it's, it's, not, it's, it's much more easier me mechanism. They, we think that they're trying to build a Chinese wall right now, and we see some signs from it. They are talking with Chinese, where M uh, making some documents with them, we're buying, they buying some stuff, but uh, I'm not sure that Russians can just build it. You need to m have much more experience and have much more effective uh, state to build such thing. Maybe they build it, we don't know, but uh, we, have, uh, we haven't it yet. If, if there will be a wall, there'll be a, quite another situation. Yeah. Thank you. Alexa Sapchenko, uh, where do you get your money from? Who are your main competitors? And where do you get your sources? Do you have a network of journalists? Do you just use agencies? Thank you. Uh, we don't talk about money, sorry. It's uh, very dangerous stuff for us to talk about money. Because uh, uh, the main, as I said, the main uh, options to, uh, to deal with media from the state is to go to the investors and the owners and talk with them. So the money is the most dangerous part of it every media, we try to be 100% transparent, but in this situation it's impossible. Yeah. Second question about uh, where we get news, yeah? So this is monitoring and we have agencies, of course, we have, um, s uh, we, have um, we, we built some our bots, cause, uh, which are working through Slack platform and we're monitoring Twitter, for example, and they just see which, uh, which s tweets in by agencies and media are m more popular than than regular, and we just see it. So we have some 
so it's just from internet and from this we are not a news agency we're not a newspaper so we it's a rare thing for us to get our own news uh, so w we just a filter as we said we, sh we we're trying to get the picture of the day and provide it to the provide it to the audience and the last question about uh, our competitors yeah uh, um, We, if we are talking about audience, so there are RBK, there are there are sometimes Dost, there are sometimes uh, Vedomosti, not too much, but we have um, couple of good media right now in Russia, so we have some competitors, of, of course. If we are talking about uh, monetization, so we have uh, all the media market <laughs> and the media which we are not thinking about, but Lenteru, we don't think about as an editorial or Gazetteru, so. We, if we are talking about uh, our money and l living, so th they are our competitors too, as is Vestia, Life News, ev everybody. Thank you. Okay, right there in the middle. Hi. Uh, hi, my name is Yuri Terekhov. I am uh, uh, one of the editors of uh, our website Rufabula. Uh, I know personally nice about uh, the challenges uh running independent media in russia uh i appreciate i appreciate your work really uh Thank you. but i have one uh question uh earlier this month there was a forum of free russia in vilnius and it was a unique event which gathered over uh 200 participants from uh russian regions from moscow from abroad and it was covered by western media bbc voice of america and uh, many others but uh i was uh and uh, there were uh, many participants like, you know, scholars, uh, politicians like Gary Kasparov, Andrei Larona from K2 Institute, uh, Lidia, uh, Lidia Shevtsova from the uh, Carnegie, and... Uh, there was huge audience, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, and I was extremely, sur extremely surprised that Russian mainstream liberal uh, media ignored this, uh, this, this event, like uh, TV Rain, uh, Medusa, and Echo Moscow. Okay, I can uh, guess the explanation for uh, so if you could get to the, if you could ask the question. Why we ignored this event? Uh, yeah, yeah, this is your question, I think. Yes. Yeah, because it's really boring. <laughs> uh, some people who know each other for tens of years and they, we, everybody knows what we'll say about Free Russia, will say it one more time. Okay, why we need to hear it one more time? It's not interesting at all. That's why I, what I said. You can say one thing for a tens of year and you say it and say it and say it and say, okay, we know that you think so. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Masha. Thank, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's just not interesting. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That uh, was. is interesting, but not in such way. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Hi, uh, Phil Schrafer, a retired international healthcare worker. First of all, to compliment you on your visual, uh, you're following the American yeah. pr principle of kiss. Keep, keep it simple, stupid. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, Question: I believe Khodorkovsky or the the Golig oligarch left went to London and tried to reach back into Russia with internet and so on. But isn't internet very much limited? That only twenty percent, say, of the city populations have any access to internet. Does that limit you that much? Do have the big cities and access to internet? Yes, of course. Uh, and yeah, I don't know the exact numbers uh, about the reach of r internet in Russia, but it's huge. And uh, I, I know that uh, the main, uh, for example, social networks, we can we can uh, prove this on th these numbers. It's it's tens of millions audience uh, each uh, month, and I think it's something like sixty or seventy million. It's not only Russia, but uh, the m yeah, I think ninety percent of uh, I think I don't have exact numbers, but I think ninety percent of um ra uh, or uh, ninety percent of young uh, uh citizens from uh, big cities use internet and use a mobile internet too and uh, everybody uses it just yeah so and you it's think it's, it's fast and it's it's uh, it's easy to access and it's cheap it's so it's over i believe that the question i asked if it was twenty percent uh of uh, reach of what's what's the percent of internet? Uh, I don't know the about the reach. Sorry, but I, I know the exact number. But uh, we, we can talk about different audience. If we talk about uh, seniors, so the reach is uh, bad. And this is uh, not about the reach; it's about the technological uh, education. First of all, uh, when I would, uh, I don't know, I, I, my, my dad is uh, uh, eighty-six, and he used Facebook. 
because he has uh, gra grandsons who, who who can show you how to use it, and he just interesting in their life in his life. Uh, but I, I'm not sure that this is a um, representative. Um, but if we we're talking about young audience, if we're talking about audience uh, under forty, so it's it's total. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Any other? Qu okay, right there. Mm -hmm. Ina Dubinsky, BBG. Uh, nice to meet you again. <laughs> uh, what is your policy regarding trolling? Trolling? Mm -hmm. When we troll... Uh, no, when you are together. trolled. <laughs> when your site, when your platforms are trolled. What do you do about that? Uh, uh, I don't know about which trolling... You, what trolling you're talking about? Because we have no right? comments. No trolling? We have no comments, so no they c nobody can troll us. We have some trolls like Russian TV channels, which visit us uh, on a regular basis in Riga. So we, I think they need just to want to make some weekends in, in Riga. It's uh, not far away, so nice then city. And we we'll lock our doors. We just lock our door. And uh, so they, we had some, uh, I think this is a real troll. So they made, we had, we saw one, uh, one report right now, it's some, uh, journalist came to Riga, he came to Riga from Moscow and the main part of his job is to find our office. And, w and we saw this report, it was really hard, we don't know why because we have an address on our website. But he, he tried to find us anywhere and at the end of the repo this report he, he found us. And he just ring the bell and our photo editor opened the door and he said, hi, Channel 2, and our editor said, goodbye, and this is the end of the report, yeah. <laughs> so uh, now we're, we're waiting for the second report, but it's not y yet live, so we don't know anything we about it. We need to train it. our photo editor to, to make this sometimes uh, good role again. Sometimes anybody on Slack uh, writes, so I said some suspicious uh, guys uh, on the sidewalk, please lock the door. And we lock the door, yeah. We, we are based in seven, seven rooms apartment in Riga, and just look, this is our trolls. Yeah, we, we have some friends. So I want to ask you, um, can you sort of give us a general comment on the state of journalism in Russia or Russian language journalism? Because, uh, well, not Russian language journalism, uh, state of journalism in Russia. Because sometimes, you know, you hear people sort of bemoaning that Russian journalism is dead. There is so much, you know, um, censorship and pressure, and the best people are leaving and they're going abroad. What's your? I think the Russian journalist is, uh, is still alive, and actually, I think the Russian journalist is in good shape right now. Uh, it's. Uh, we have tons of great journalists, uh, which are, which are good, they which are ma which make good reporting in the not a good situation, and this shows that they are real professionals and they can work. And uh, we actually, we have no problems with hire people. We have problems, the, the money problems, of course. But uh, if we want to hire someone. We have no such problems. There are tons of good, great journalists. There are not so much uh, good uh, editorials, because uh, this is, I think, the money problem too. But the new media launched in Russia, actually day by day, e every year we see five to six m new media, and this is sometimes, th sometimes they are not very interesting, but sometimes they are really cool, and uh, so they are. The last 20 years, Educate, educate uh, gave us a, really a couple of schools, and these schools are not in universities, they are in the editorials, and they, uh, uh, they gave the our media market the tons of good journalists. The problem is that many of these schools are dead right now. This is a problem, because these media are changed or closed or something like that. So we have s uh, right now the problems with schools inside the medias. And uh, so if we're talking about this moment, everything is, I, I can say that everything is bad. Yeah, we have bad situation around us, but we can, we have, uh, we have people we can hire, we can, we have good people in the editorial, we have some competitors, but if we are talking about the next five years, I don't know what happens next. But we don't know what happens tomorrow, so maybe it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm curious uh, how I, I, Medusa is published in Russian and also in English. You have audiences yes. here in the U.S. and probably in other English-speaking countries. How big is that audience and how important is it for you? And what are you trying to communicate to that audience? Uh, of course, our audience on the English website is much, 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 much smaller. Uh, it's, uh, actually, it's, it's pretty small. But, uh, but uh, it's more like B2B. Uh, media, we understand that, uh, exactly that uh, there is not so much people which are interested in what happens in Russia right now or in former USSR right now. It's only specialist students. It's uh, something from these buildings and uh, so some uh, such buildings around the world. And for journalists, uh, we understand that uh, the normal readers do just uh, they will use uh, New York Times and they read what happens in the world right now. And around uh, around them right now, and if there are some interesting stuff in Russia, they will read th they will read it there. Our uh, we're making this uh, media f for to uh, explain the professional community what happens in Russia first of all, and to give the uh, U.S. and U.K. media first of all the options to republish our content because it's just we uh, it's just mm, we think that. It sometimes it's cool and we it's 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 good for us and we will and when it will be published on Guardian or on Quartz or something like that. Uh, so so yes, that's why. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so I want to ask you this: uh, What would you say is the biggest story out of Russia that foreign media gets wrong? And what is, or maybe underestimates, and what would be the biggest story, let's say, coming out of the U.S. that the Russian media, good Russian media, does not get or under reports? Mm, Russian media don't get U.S. stories at all. I think, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's not, it's not, not, it's not, not a question because uh, so we Russian mi Russian uh, news agenda is very isolated, as I said. So the main uh, stories came from Russia or from Ukraine or right now from Syria. Uh, like if really if, if Russian media talks about uh, uh, Europe, so they d really like a refugee problem, really like it. And if you, they talk about uh, U.S., I know. Actually, I don't know. I don't. Uh, I mean, I not don't uh, really good uh, um, good uh, listener for Russian TV, so I don't know what happened there. But if you are talking about what uh, um, uh, Western media write about Russia, so. The good point with the Rush, uh, with Western media is that there are tons of media, and they write different stuff. Uh, I'm not sure. Th may I think that some f sometimes we see that there is uh, some general line in all of these meanings, and I think that uh, sometimes they write about what happens in Russia, and they think this is too simple. It's it's mu it's m much more uh, um, it's a little bit different story. It's not so easy to understand in this in these ways, and um, it's uh, really need to uh, to to live there and to talk with people on the ground uh, to understand it. But actually, uh, sometimes uh, there are really good report reports from uh, about Russia. And for example, the New Yorker make sometimes really good reports about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes you see you read something and think, okay, you, you just read something. This is Russian. No, no, this is not Russian. This is your Russian. This is Russian. Your mind. It's not about your reality. It's something like that. But I can say about the general line of Western media because there are tons of uh, tons of different uh, dif different kind uh, points of view. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we have a question in the back there. Hi, thank you. Very interesting report. Uh, thank you. Um, w wondering, like, what is the demographics of your readership, and do they, based on the age, do they care about different issues, and which issues are important to older people, to younger people, etc.? Thank you. Um, I, I made it, my main audience is under thirty-five, so this is a young, active audience from the big cities. What issues they care about? Uh, I can answer the question uh, f short because there are m many many issues. I, we don't have such so, so, uh, such uh, researches 
because we, we can see Google Analytics, it's too stu we have two stupid uh, things there. So they like film slam, it's, it's not helps us at all. Uh, or they li like travel or read. Uh, but we can see just what we make and what they like. And this is just a normal, it, it's, uh, they, uh, I don't know, I, I can, uh, I can uh, say what we want the, them to like. And this is much more important for us. For example, we make m more, we're trying to make more stuff from around the world. We have no correspondence there, but we understand that we need to tell stories about what happens in US, in Europe, uh, and it can be not so much important stories. This is not refugees or bomb attacks or something like that. Not ho only horrible, it's just what happens, wh what changes, technology, uh, social problems, elections, everything. We just need to show people the world at large. And these, actually they're not so much interesting, is it? But with, we understand that this is very important to uh, get them, to deliver them the international agenda. Yeah. Please. I, so it sounds like it's a bit uh, coincidental that you ended up in Latvia, but all the same, I was wondering um, what kind of response you've had to your work from the Russian diaspora there and more broadly in Western Europe and the US, and if that's been different with it from the response within Russia? Uh, it's not a bad coincidence. Actually, we are thankful for Latvia. We had no, s no problems with Latvian authorities. We just, m m m m it's, it's really a uh, new experience for us that you have some laws and some protocols and you just make business on it. It's, it's, it for us, it's fantastic. So it's not, a, actually, we, when we're talking about a business, so it's great. Yeah, we have no problems at all. Uh, and I hope this is not why we're, so, uh, I know, not why we're, w many people know about us from around the world, just because this uh, Latvian, gov uh, Latvian laws works and uh, Latvian government works transparent. Uh, if we're uh, talking about uh, Russian-speaking community in Latvia, so I think they have m so much problems, n and this is not a Medusa, so we are just, they're just not thinking at, uh, about us. We're not a media for them. They, some of them read us, but not, so, uh, the, there is, a, uh, I think they read, they watch Russian TV or, or read, um, local newspapers or something like that. But uh, I don't want to talk about problems with Russian community in Latvia because I'm not a citizen of Latvia. It's not my, it's not, mm, it's not good for me to talk about it, but uh, I think there are many problems and they thinking about it inside, inside Latvia, it, we are not the part of the problem. We are something, we're like expats there. And, uh, one thing I I some one uh, I heard some uh, radio sh radio talk show in Latvia about Medusa. It was a year ago, and Galina Galina was on the uh, Latvian TV channel and said something about that uh, when th they visited an uh, Riga's central market and they see uh, and they heard how people talks. So it's just to be in a bus in Moscow. So it's just the same people. And s they say s same things, they uh, uh, jokes, the same thing, they, so it's everything like that. And uh, it was a scandal about it. So like in Russia, oh my God. Mm -hmm. And some, uh, there was many calls to this talk show and some uh, woman said, Russia, uh, Lat uh, Latvia is a country, but Russia is our motherland. Uh, Latvia is a homeland, mm -hmm. and Russia is a motherland. Mm -hmm. And they came from our motherland to our homeland to say awful words about our motherland. Mm -hmm. and this was great, actually. But I'm not sure how it's uh, pop how this position is popular in Latvia right now. I think they have many uh, problems by uh, by their own. Yeah. Wait for the microphone, please. Irina Van Dusen, uh, Voice of America. 
Um, you probably, I'm sure you know that every like American business has a mission statement. If you, do you have one? And if you do, what is it? Uh, yeah, we have actually we had a mission statement. There are five uh, points, uh, and I forget. All, all of them, it. yeah. <laughs> uh, I think the main. <laughs> uh, I said something from that. So we we like facts. We talk less. We say less, not more. And uh, this uh, for me right now, it's the most important thing that we are in the global world, mm -hmm. and we think about Russia as a part of the global world. And this is uh, our, our main thing. I think uh, right now. Yeah. So I'll ask one final question. I think we're we're coming to the close of the event. What is the next big thing for Medusa? What are you thinking about it? About what are your plans? Uh, in terms of <laughs> we have huge content. plans, but we don't talk about it in public. So <laughs> 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 uh, we 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 plan to uh, to launch some uh, projects inside Medusa this year. But as I said, we had many experiments, and some experiments don't launch actually. So maybe if I talk, uh, I actually we have some uh, uh, some newsletter, big newsletter for our, uh, for our audience. We use it uh, every month, and I made uh, some mistake there for a couple times. I said, and in two months we'll d we'll launch some new app. And then in a year we don't have it yet. So I I say everything something which uh, it's actually. Actually, sometimes it's better to remain silent. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Thank you so, so much. Let's all join. Um, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for a great presentation. Thank you.